right now I'm a leader. My participation in the leadership really has changed my life. I actually start my business in constructing of these houses. I'm the one who have did all that. I was unable to speak, to write or read, but I'm now able to interact with anyone. My name is Adeke Mindeli and I am the Head of Office at Interim for UN Women here in Uganda. UN Women in Uganda over the past three or a little over three years has been implementing our Leadership, Empowerment, Access and Protection program. It is a flagship program initiative of the UN Women globally and in 2017 we piloted this here in Uganda. And we had the trust of the government of Norway that invested significantly in this project. And over those three years, we were able to support uh, women and girls in particular in um, communities in West Nile, Northern Uganda, to uh, implement this leadership, empowerment and protection program. We've been able to demonstrate very significant results that UN Women is proud of and uh, we're happy to uh, say that we have succeeded in renewing our partnership with the government of Norway and they'll be extending this for another uh, four years. Uh, right now, what I do, I'm a leader. The RWC One Chairperson of Village 4. My participation in the leadership really has changed my life. I myself, because by then I was a shy person, I cannot talk anyhow. When even you ask me a question, I will not reply. I just keep quiet. That is a fear, let me say. That is fear. But since I joined the leadership training, which was held by Refugee Law Project, it has opened me up for me to discuss with the people, to interact with the people, even to address people. So that fear has gone by itself since I had that training. Let them bring for us more leadership training so that more women also will come on power. Like the structure of this year, when you see in zone two here, most of the leaders are women. So that means the Refugee Law Project and some partners, they have done a lot to raise women up. The training program has already changed or improved our life in the community because now you can see even in, in Maji too, now we have three women in a chair that is block leaders. In school, every school we have head girls. And in the community, if you, are, you told them to do such kind like this one, they will not fear. And even they can speak very well with the men's, even they can compute now with the men's. I think in the coming year, we are going to have more women in, in chair. Those days before the program, women could not uh, stand up hmm, and talk for themselves. But as a result of this program here, so many women, women were able to talk in different forums, to represent their views of the women. And uh, men also got to understand, yeah, we, we, don't need to, we don't need to treat women differently. They are also what? They are also like us. So we need to treat them with dignity, respect, and we also need to respect their rights. So since I came from South Sudan in, in 2016, I was unable to speak, to write or read, but now since I joined EPA, I'm now able to write, to read, and speak, interact with anyone. Now I'm a leader in the community, yeah, in the village nine, I'm a leader, I'm a peace mediator, and also with the World Division, I'm working under child protection. Yeah, we are looking after children. Actually, in the community, EPA empowered we as women, yeah. Right now, as I talk, I work in the health center. I wanted to appreciate, first of all, the organization who brought the the project of English learning, I, I was unable to speak very good English, but right now I can do perfect in it. And also 
After that, they gave us certificate, and then I apply to the health center. And right now, I'm doing the work from there because of the FLANA. I'm translating, cleaning the, the communities in refugee settlement here in Majitru. They are saying what I'm doing is good and it has changed my life. So they also need that so that their life also changed like me. Since we started this program, in, it was in 2018. We started without me knowing anything. Huh? I don't know how to save even what, but actually they took us for the training. So that with that training, I got knowledge of saving. During this COVID-19, we actually managed, although it was the way, the, there is problem of getting money, but we also struggle. At least by a month, even if we save only 1,000, uh, this also can help. Actually, after sharing out in 2019, uh, I actually start my business with the little money which I was been saving. After selling this, I get small income on it. I begin pushing on with my kids, even buying clothes, the constructing of these houses. I'm the one who have did all that. With the little money I got from saving and with the little knowledge I got from what? From VSLA saving, which was supported by KIN women. During when I'm so Sudan, I came here, I came nothing. Kaya's training us, let us start VSLA. VSLA has helped me with a different way. I save, personally myself, I save the end of the year 500,000. I took my own, I bought a chair now, right now. When something like a party, like a funeral, like what? They are renting that chair. I just, I give that idea to group member. I say group, let us generate our income. Immediately, group was take their interest to what, what? Suspend, the big suspend, and a plate with a spoon. Right now, if something happening at your place, we shall give you that suspend. After using, you will bring 150,000. You will bring for us, for the group. That is the goodness of VSLA. Thank you so much. Actually, I am so excited to tell you that there's something very unique in this response, especially in Lipu 1. For example, when uh, we set the ICT center for, for, for the women, building the women's skills, we looked around and we did not see such kind of thing happening in Ajumani. I don't know whether in West Nile or specifically where a computer center has been set for women, building the skills for women. The normal thing, women cannot operate these uh, computer things, maybe like electronic things. They are, their work is in the kitchen. But now I'm surprised when it was set there, it looks a unique thing where women are being trained. They have a center where they can be able to empower themselves in, in the computer literacy. You know, we have vulnerable communities who are affected by gender-based violence. And these survivors have challenges of accessing legal aid or legal redress. So refugee law project through um, UN Women, they're able to provide these services to these uh, GBV for survivors, and they're able to cope up with the situation. And they also do what we call referral services. And they also do legal representation through this funding from uh, UN Women, the VG Law Project was able to provide mobile court sessions in these refugee camps. It has helped a lot. People were in darkness as far as legal services are concerned. And they have targeted groups, both host and uh, refugee communities. It has helped people to come together and to coexist. So that brings the aspect of humanitarian relationship between the, the refugees and the host. The other partner is TPO. TPO is particularly in the area of uh, mental health. In 2013 and up to 2018, we had serious cases of mental health. But allow me to say, as of now, although it is at a higher level, there are cases that have been managed well, and that has a bit reduced the level of cases of mental health in the district. In this area, I'm a religious leader but also being trained by refugee law project. 
as a male champion in my area here, people are blind in gender issues. They say boys cannot do what? Fetch water. Boys cannot even wash clothes. Meaning that they, give, they specify other roles for what? For boys. And I leave actually girls to work a lot at home. Sweeping, fetching water, all they leave this works to girls. That is why the boys grow with that habit, even including me. Me, I was not even collecting firewoods. I was not fetching water. I thought that those works are for what? For women. But currently, I can fetch water. Even I can cook. I can do those works which are done by what? By women. And we are now telling people that actually we are all human beings. Let us not leave the big work only to what? To women. Let us share because they are also human beings. So people are now trying to understand. As I said, me formerly I was not even involving to do them, but currently I've changed and there are some who are also changing like me. Male champions, our role is to advocate for men's change of attitude. Men should know that having involved themselves into alcohol consumption, marungi chewing is against family you know, management. Denial of rights of a woman to do business, it's, it's, it's a crime. So we advocate for uh, women's change of life. We even discovered things in our, with us, our cultural values. In our culture, women have equal rights to learn. They have access to the land. They have even uh, the use to put the land to use. It's equal. But this was salient. Is it salient? Salient. It was lying idle. We were not uh, aware of it, but this workshop awakened it. I should register our appreciation to overcome us women. Last year, let me attest this to you that uh, women emerged the best because of the support that is from the humanitarian agencies, especially UN women, supporting to these other partners, they are implementing partners on the ground. So we did a massive awareness campaign. Civic education was conducted and it has made it easier to ensure that the roles and responsibilities of women have been stipulated. They are, they are no longer the housekeepers, but they are people who have diverse experience in knowledge and try to handle some VACLS to support their livelihoods. We are advocating that the LEAP project must continue. Must continue in the sense that uh, we have uh, 19 settlements. These settlements have never been targeted all. For the first phase, even the second phase, we are yet going to identify some few settlements which we deem still demand for the continuity of this program. In the next phase of our LEAP programming, we will be investing significantly in women's economic empowerment, as well as their leadership and their capacity. We will be skilling women in uh, the communities, uh, humanitarian context, and also host communities so that we can bring a balance to those who are, uh, are coming in uh, as refugees and also those that are hosting, we're trying to bring about that balance. One very important uh, aspect of our LEAP program phase two is that we would also be building women empowerment centers. Those centers will, will be equipped with the um, resources both human and uh, capital resources to ensure that women in the locality can come there, uh, skill themselves, uh, showcase what they're doing, sell their products, and, uh, and engage in uh, commercial activities. And um, of course, we will be going digital as well, so computers will be made available. Um, in some of our communities, we've taught women how to use uh, cameras just just like we have here. So it, it's, go, it's going to be a wide range of um, resources that will be provided in these uh, resource centers. 
and we, we, we believe very strongly that this would help us to scale up uh, women's economic empowerment within the communities where we work. We would like to commend the government of Uganda for its generous support to humanitarian uh, and refugees in the area. And um, we, as UN Women, pledge our continued support uh, to humanitarian action. Thank you.